Hi, welcome everyone. My name is Kathy Hart, and we are going to have fun being creative today, doing a very, very simple, very beginner friendly watercolor. The way I'm going to do it today will be designed to go as a, to fit on a card to send to somebody or to give to someone, but you can do whatever size you want. One of the things I share is that, you know, when we were young, everyone thought that they were a, they, that you're, you were a great artist. You know, can you remember when you were maybe six or eight and you showed your parents something that you had either painted or made at school or at home, and you were so proud of that work? Well, as we age, we just become more critical of our work and less convinced that we're any good at art. Well, we're all artists, so I want you to just Get rid of any negative thoughts. We're going to have fun today. Um, the class is being sponsored by, it's hosted actually, by our Renaissance Society in the greater Sacramento area. That is a, our lifelong learner group through the university at um, Sac State. So that's who is hosting it. And we absolutely appreciate them doing that and providing our Zoom for everyone. Now I'm hoping that you can see my desktop. So if I could either see a couple thumbs up or if you can put in chat, yes. Okay, perfect. Cause I did it incorrectly last time. I wanna make sure. This is the cute little card we're gonna make today. I did this one last fall and there are things I like about it and things that I'm not as crazy about it but it's super simple. I just did this one about a week ago, it's very, very similar, but you'll notice a few differences. Number one, this newer one, the uh, more spring colored one on the right has very you know, light colors and there's white space between the flowers. You can't really see the light, light pink on the right side, but there's some uh, white space. And I actually like how that looks better than this one, which I, I put the, um, it's kind of like just blobs of paint, I think too close together. Another thing I'm not as fond of on this one is how straight this one is. So I'm showing you things I don't like because maybe you will uh, do it differently for yours. This one I just recently did, you'll notice I've got some arcing of the flowers. I think that looks better. I think it looks more natural. And so, you know, this one's on watercolor paper, the one on the left. The one on the right is on cardstock. Because if we have beginners joining us, I just want everyone to feel like they can do, they can paint and you don't need to invest a ton of money into um, supplies before you see if you even like it. You can use the, the kids, you know, watercolors and cardstock and do a few things to see if you enjoy it. Um, let me talk about the supplies really quickly. I have water here. I've got, um, this is where I'm actually going to draw, but I've got, I'm gonna, I will be painting on, on watercolor paper today. I have a very simple, very beginner friendly set of watercolor. And then I have two um, paint brushes. I probably am just gonna use this one the most. It's a, um, it's a five round, but anything would work. This is more what I would say, what you would probably get in a, um, a little, if you bought watercolors. Um, I think this one's about, this one says it's a seven, but I've used it for quite a while. So it doesn't, doesn't have a great tip, but I still um, use it if I have larger spaces to paint. So what I wanna show you is we're going to draw the watering can first. And it's really a very simple shape. It's almost a rectangle. And then we just have a few things coming off the side. In order for you to see what I'm drawing, I'm going to use a marker. You will not use a marker. So get out your, your cardstock or your watercolor paper and use a pencil to lightly draw in the um, watering can. We actually won't draw in the flowers because they are so, so simple, but we'll get into that in a second. Let's do our watering can. 
So we want to, I'm starting at the top left corner and then I'm coming down and I'm making it slightly wider at the bottom than at the top. Then I'm going to do the other side. And instead of going a straight across, yes, I will send out a link to the recording. I'm going to just do a slight curve along the bottom. And then for my top, I'm going to match that curve at the top. Slight curve. And then just so I have a good idea of what my space is, I'm going to do a slight curve on the top. So this is what I have so far. Now I'm going to put a handle on my left side. So I'm just, you can do a curved handle. Mine's a little bit squared off, but you do whatever you want. So I'm just going to go out, come down a little bit, and then come back in. So that's my handle, but I'm going to do the inside of the handle. So I'm just going to follow that with a little bit of white space in between. And that's where I'll paint is in between. Okay, so that's the can and my handle. Now let's do the spout. So I'll come about to a third of the way up from the bottom. And I'm just going to draw a line out. That's the bottom of the spout. Now I'm going to do the top of the spout. So I'm going to follow that line. So I want them parallel. And at the very top, I'm going to do another um, kind of an oval. And I'm going to just try to match the same curve that I've been doing. It's a little bit bigger than my spout, than my, um, yeah, this part of the spout. So that's what the can looks like. And you could paint your can in whatever color you'd like. I uh, did it one time in a light blue and then another time I did it in a gray. So I'm gonna move my painting over, I mean, my drawing over here and I'm gonna talk briefly about the flowers. I have it slightly larger here. I don't know why I didn't give myself more space. Let's activate our watercolors. So I'm going to activate a green and by activating, I'm just going to take water and I'm going to dip it um, and, and put a dab of water on the paints that I think I'm gonna be using. So I'm gonna start with some green. I think I'll, <clears throat> I'll do a little pink, pinkish purple because I'm just gonna show you. So I've just activated my watercolor. The reason I have these uh, plastic, it's actually the lid to this container, this watercolor um, set. I have this right here in case I want to mix colors. Uh, let me show you what I mean. Like this is a very dark green. And I might not, and it's a very bold green. And I, if I'm doing a spring bouquet, I'm not going to want something this green. Let me show. Uh, let me show you down here at the bottom. Actually, let me show you on the back what that looks like. So here's the color that's in my palette. Pretty dark. Okay. If I want a spring bouquet, I might want to dull that up a bit. <clears throat> so there's lots of ways to do it. I'm going to take. I'm just going to take a little bit of red. Let's see what happens. I might get a brown. No, it's OK. I put a little dash of red. And you can see I have more of a, um, it's more of a muted green, which I, I personally prefer that. A lot of times the paints you get in a set are, are just super, super bright. OK, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some paint. And I'm just going to show you how we're going to do, actually I'll do it, no. Nope. How I'm going to, how we're going to do these flowers. We're going to do the stems first, and then I'll show you how we make those blossoms. Could not be easier. So to make the stems, we'll start in the pot and we're just going to bring it up. That one wasn't super curved, but that's okay. 
And let's say we decide we want, I don't know, I think I've got maybe five or six. I'm even gonna mix up my green a little, have a different green, because I ran out of the other one. Okay. So I've made some green stems. This is just to show you how I do the blossoms. So I'm gonna go into the color for my blossoms, which I'm just choosing for the example, it's kind of a pink purple. And it could not be easier. They're, they're blobs of paint. I don't know how else to say it. So I'm actually going to put a leaf up at the top, which I haven't done yet, but watch how I'm doing this. I'm gonna start at the top and my things up at the top, my blobs are going to be a little smaller and, I'm, and they're random. Don't make them like super even. You just want them to be, you know, some are gonna be uh, smaller, some, but they, and you don't want them to be circles. You want them to be just kind of spotty, random looking thingamajigs. That's the technical artistic term. See how I'm doing that? They're not all in a row. I'm trying to make them different, but I'm getting wider as I go to the bottom. And this will give the illusion, this is a much bigger one, but especially when you're doing a card, this gives the illusion of blossoms. So I'm getting wider and slightly larger blossoms as I go down it. It's okay to go over, that just means this one would be in front. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. See how those are just blobs? And this is just paper. It isn't watercolor paper, it isn't cardstock. It's just regular paper that goes through your printer. So that's how we make the flowers. And then up at the top, what we would do is we're gonna have a green leaf. Down here, we're gonna put a little leaf. We'll put a couple little leaves. So that's how we're gonna make our flower and we're gonna do that however many stems you put in. Might be three, might be five, whatever you're going to do. That's how we do the flowers. Now, first I'm going, let's go ahead and paint the can. And for that, I'm gonna go ahead and use, I'm gonna kind of make up a gray. I have a, a blue here, a light blue. And I'm putting that over here cause I'm gonna mix it, trying to give myself enough. And I'm gonna put just, I actually have some gray but you could put just a touch of black in there. And then what you wanna do is you wanna make it really thin. So here's that same paper. I want to check my color. Yeah, that's a nice, you, you can't see it really well, but it's a very light blue gray. So I'm, I'm happy with that color. So I'm going to start by just, let me put this so you can, I think you can see this one better. So I'm just going to go around the paint can and do a light coat throughout the whole thing that we've drawn. So you can either go down the side, however you wanna do it, but we're going to fill in the whole thing. So go ahead and paint in your paint can with a light coat of whatever color you chose, either it could be a, it could be a spring color, it could be a blue, it could be a more of a gray color, whatever you have, could be yellow, anything. There's not a right or wrong way for a paint can. It's your paint can, you pick. We're going all over everything we've drawn. We're gonna do the handle. and the spout with this light coat. If 
if you ever get too much paint on your paper, the way to lift up that paint would be to put your paintbrush, dab it onto a paper towel or a napkin, and then come back in with a drier brush and it just lifts up your paint. So that's a way to take off any extra. If you get a little too much in a spot, or if there's too much water, Can you repeat what you just said about taking off paint? Sure. What you want to do, let me let me actually get this done. Okay. So I have two places that have a little bit more paint on the handle. I go in, I take my paintbrush and I take off the water in the paint and then I come back in before it dries and my dry paintbrush will lift up I know that's a little hard to see, I'm sorry about that, but it lifts up those extra spots if you don't want them there. Thank so you. That, that's one way to take up some paint. You can also use a paper towel directly if you wanted to, um, to just dab it with a paper towel, that works. But a paintbrush, you have, I think, more control. Okay, what I want us to do now is just a little bit of shading. So in this painting, this card that I did, the light is coming from the top right or from the right, okay? So I've got a little bit of shadow under the um, curve here at the top and a little bit of shadow along the left side, along the bottom, and a little bit at the bottom of the spout. And how you get that shadow is you just add more color. So I'm gonna take the very same color I was using or something very near to it, I had to mix up some more. And I'm gonna kind of just go over for a, not exactly a second coat. I don't want it perfectly straight. Do you see how I've got that? That's too straight now. That doesn't look natural. So I'm gonna take off the paint and I'm just going to blend the edge in. Sorry, this is a little light for you guys, but I'm going along the right hand side and I'm just moving some of that paint so it isn't a hard line. I want to avoid a hard line. Let me see if I can do it on the bottom and if you can see. So I'm gonna first add the paint. And I'm gonna take off the extra paint and I'll just blend, oops, sorry. I'll blend that in by going, in this case, up. So I don't have a hard line. But it puts a little more paint on my left side now than my right side. Now I'm going to, I have to put this down, but I'm going to go under my spout. Same thing, adding more color. And then blending out my hard line. Okay. Once you've got however much shadow you want, I'm adding just a little bit more color up at the top <clears throat> under my, under the very top of the pot there, blending that out. Okay, once you're happy with your shadow on your pot, let's go ahead and make sure you've got a green you're happy with. I need to um, blend up a bit. Let 
And that's a little too bright, so I'm going to add this ochre yellow and make it a little more muted. There we go. Now, one thing I noticed when I painted this one, because I used really light spring colors, I can see my whole stem. And I'm not as fond of that. So I think what I might try this time is to do a stem like this, where I've got, you know, a stem, a space, a stem, a space. So I'm still following the same line, but I don't have it completely um, filled in. So then I can put the blossoms. I'm just going to try that this time. I haven't done it that way before. But if you prefer, just make a straight line. So decide how many blooms you want. This one has one, two, three, four. Okay, that one has six. This one I put a different flower, one, two, three, four, five of these, you know, spot, whatever they are. They're all made up flowers. So I think what I'll do is I'm gonna start on my right and I'm going to kind of curve to the right. So that's what I did, kind of a dotted line stem. I think I'll make five, I'll see how that looks. Don't be afraid to turn your paper, folks, because it needs to be something that's comfortable. And that isn't always just straight up. Remember, we wanna slightly curve those lines, it looks a little more natural. Okay, so I've done five, five dotted lines. Those are going to be my stems. Now I want you to use your same green. And then up at the top, you can see on this one, we're going to add like one or two little leaves or little buds, whatever those are. And to make that, it's we're just going to, I'm going to do a large one so you can see it. We're just going to start with the tip, press and lift up. And then if you want it to be a little bigger on the other side, you just do the other side. So it was, we're starting on our tip, pressing, and I did a little bit of a curve there, pressing. So we want that at the tip, either one or two, and then we'll start in with our color. One or two little um, leaves or buds, whatever they are. We don't, aren't, we don't know, I'm not a botanist, but that's kind of how they look. Mine are really little because I'm doing a card here. So I have little buds up at the very top and then I did one just slightly below that. So rinse out your green. We're done for green with green for now. And you want to make sure you've activated the colors you want to use on your flowers. So you can either use darker colors. That's what I did here or this one has spring light colors, pinks, purples, two different colors, pinks, light blue. So whatever color you want, you wanna activate that paint by putting some water in there. I'm starting with a uh, light pink and I'm getting some of that paint on my brush. And just like I showed you, okay, that looks good. 
we're going to start, I'm going to start on my right hand side, and I'm just going to do those spots or blobs or whatever you want to call it. And we're going to start out thinner at the top and get wider as we go to the bottom. Don't just go to either side of the stem, make sure you put some on the stem. And we don't want round dots, we want irregular shapes. So let's go ahead and get those, get that first flower in. Just by moving that paintbrush around. And we're going to go down the stem, getting wider and larger, slightly larger irregular shapes. So I have my first one in, it's pink and it's still wet. So one of the things you can do, a technique is called wet on wet where you can take a slightly um, different color. I'm gonna take a slightly darker pink and because these are wet on just a couple of them, I'm gonna just tap in, whoops, that, that was pretty dry. So it actually lifted it. All right, it's too dry. Okay, I've got color on my paintbrush. I'm gonna look at some of these that have quite a lot of paint and I'm just gonna tap in some darker color. A few places. Very hard to say I'm sorry on the camera because it's so small, but it's adding just a little bit of dimension because it's got, um, you know, not everything is just one color now. You don't have to do this. You can just have it one color. It's perfectly fine, perfectly fine. But I wanted to show you that if you were interested in doing it. So mine now has two colors of pink. So let's move to the left and do our next color, whatever you choose. I think I'm going to go ahead and do a blue. So I'm activating my blue paint. And I'm just gonna do the exact same thing. I'm gonna start up at the top with smaller little blobs and then I'm gonna widen it and make those blobs bigger as I come down. But I am going to put color on the stem. I'm not gonna just show the whole stem. And especially where I don't have anything, I'm gonna make sure I've got lots of blossoms in that area. Irregular shapes getting bigger as they're coming down, down the stem. And for this one, I'm choosing to have it be behind my pink one but in front of the one that's on the left. <clears throat> so you can see, I let my pink one be in front here, but now I went over my stem on the left side. So my next flower, I'm really just gonna do the top part and maybe just a hint alongside. So think about what's in front and what's behind. All right. Let's go ahead and do, I'm not sure how many you have, but I still have three more. So I'm going to do a lavender for my next one. A light purple, same process, starting on the top, smaller blobs, bringing them out. 
as we go down the stems, making sure they're irregular. Not that dots wouldn't work, they would. It, I think um, irregular just looks a little more natural. And I didn't have much to do for that one because it's behind my blue one. So I only went down to where my blue started and then I put a little hint of it um, along so behind where my blue is, where there's a little bit of white space. Now I'm gonna start repeating my colors just because I, I like the idea of not all, I mean, you do whatever you want, but I'm gonna put another pink one in here on my uh, second to last one, another really bright pink. Isn't this one easy, folks? I mean, it's just basically moving your paintbrush. You're not trying to follow something exactly, which sometimes that can be a little stressful. So it's just putting these dots on the paper or these shapes. And it just turns out so pretty. So I did my second pink one. I'm actually not gonna add a color variation to that one because it's behind the purple. And I think for my last one, hmm, I think I'll put more blue this time. Do another blue one. So for me, I'm choosing to have this blue one a little bit in front of the pink. So I'm going ahead and what that means is I'm just putting it on top. Very good. I'm gonna give you a minute to finish whatever flowers you might still have. And we'll put in just a tiny bit of greenery. I don't have a lot of room for greenery, but you might have more room. We'll do the greenery and then we're going to do, okay, that one you can't see it. And then we're gonna do a shadow. You're welcome. I'm glad to do it. I enjoy it and I enjoy sharing. And for any of you locally, if you have not uh, uh, joined Renaissance, you definitely want to check it out. We're going to have some great in-person events this summer. And then we will be starting to um, recruit for new members. Uh, actually, we'll be starting this summer, but we, we actually begin our fall classes in September. So let's go back into our green and just add a tiny bit of greenery. There's a couple of choices. Um, you could, no, I didn't do it on those, okay. So you can add some coming out or in between. You can see I kind of have that on both sides. You could actually bring some of the gr same green that we used at the top and bring it down and just do a couple of little spots of green. I don't have a lot of room for green, so I think I might just do what I said, which is put a little, little bit of little hint of green. Maybe I'll do one here. Hmm. Yeah, mine are mine flowers are pretty crowded. Um, 
Let me do a little one up here. So don't be afraid to do them along your flower. So I just put in a hint of green in mine. I did it on the bottom here. I might do one up in the middle, but I also did it along the stem. I did two here and then one up here. I think I'll do another one over here. Coming down, that's enough. So however much greenery, these are different kinds of leaves that I put in, longer leaves, whatever you have room for. Now I'll tell you something that I, I did on both of these and I didn't like it on either one. I used a pen and came back and did dots on my, I don't like how that looks, but if you want to, you can. That is certainly an option. I ended up thinking, oh, I wish I hadn't have done that. Um, Folks, we are almost done. I want to show you um, how you can make a shadow like we have on this one. Remember that light is coming from this side. So if you've got something that's blocking the light, it's going to cast a shadow. So if you have a black, um, you just want a really, really, really uh, dilute black. And I would check that out before you put it on your painting. So I mixed up something that's really, really light. Let me see. Oh, see how dark that is? That's way too dark. I don't want it that dark. So I'm going to add more water. Now let me see if I like it. That's better. It always dries a little lighter. So I'm actually going to put just a hint more of water in there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to Start on the left side. I'm just going to make an irregular shape coming down the bottom. So I'm using the side of my brush. Yes, there is. And I will include it in the link with the recording. There is a YouTube channel and we have lots of fun things on there. Really interesting um, history, food, all kinds of cool stuff, art. So see how I'm just taking this with the side of my brush. I'm not going all the way. Okay, now I need to be more detailed. So I'm taking that. And I'm just kind of casting a shadow. Irregular shape doesn't need to be, you know, a perfect shape. Just the illusion of the shadow. That's how I did mine. Very light. It's just some kind of adding a little bit of detail. So I will send out a recording to everybody after, um, and I'm actually doing something this afternoon. So it'll probably be either later tonight or tomorrow. Okay, so now you have actually painted a beautiful card. I just wanna give you a couple of more ideas if you wanted to embellish it. Tell you what I would do with this. This is watercolor paper. It's very inexpensive watercolor paper. I think it's about 90 pounds, so student grade. Um, I would glue this onto card stock and that, that, oh, you know, that I folded, that I've made into a card. Then what I would put on top, oh, here, well, this one I already did. So I, I um, have glued this one onto card stock. I stamped the back. This one I actually stamped by name, my name. Now I'm, I'm uh, actually signing, signing it. You could sign the front, you could sign the back, but something that's really fun to add to a card, if you want um, um, some kind of a message, you could either hand write it, you could do it right on the card. What I like to do is I stamp a greeting. I either do like happy birthday, thank you, thanks so much, thinking of you. And then you can put that on your card. Let me move that down a bit. So that would be a thank you card. If that's too big, of course, you could handwrite something smaller. Let me show you, I have got a happy birthday that I've, um, that I've stamped and it's in pink. So it might look really nice with this one. Happy birthday with the, in the, spring light pink and purple colors. Another thing that I've just started doing with some of my cards is I've outlined it in watercolor. Another idea, you certainly don't have to do any of these things, but the way I did outline 
uh, with watercolor. I did not trust myself to say, oh, let me take a paintbrush and just, I've seen artists do this and I think that's great, but I do not have the ability to like get it to make it look nice basically. So, you know, if I'm just going along here, mine would be all wobbly. If, if you can do it, that's great. What I did to make this one is I got a ruler. I pressed the ruler down, leaving me just the right amount of space that I wanted. And then I took my paintbrush loaded with color and then went along the edge. So uh, my ruler would be here and I would go right along the edge with the amount of color that gave a fairly straight line for me. I, I mean, I was happy with that. But I, like I said, I've just started doing that. That is something kind of new for me. And there's all kinds of things you can do. You could map this. You could have pink and, and map this on top of a pink backing and then put it on cardstock. You could handwrite something. I mean, the sky's the limit and your creative minds are pretty much limitless. So any questions before I take it off the desktop? You can unmute yourself or let me see, there might be something in chat. I haven't been reading this. I do not seal anything. I, I never have. And I've, I've uh, asked that question of other artists and maybe, um, I don't think you would need to do it with cards. Some people do it with paintings because water color is not light fast. Um, so that is something if you're doing a larger painting, you may want to do. I, I don't have anything that I've ever sealed. But again, I'm not expecting these to last, you know, a hundred years. And I think the idea about the spouts might, um, might be a really good one to have smaller holes. I just, no, I didn't like how mine turned out. Um, this is actually the only thing I do online. I, um, there's lots and lots of things with Renaissance Society, who's our host, but um, they are for members. And I use the same, I use my smaller brush for the whole thing, except for basically wetting my palette. It's just, it was a small painting today, so I wanted a little more control. Let me take this off of, um, okay, let me remove the spotlight there. What I would like is if everyone who painted today, if you would do me a favor and if you would hold your painting up so I could still see your face, but Get that in the pic in the frame, and I want to take a picture. Let me make sure I can do this right. Okay, let's see those beautiful paintings. Everyone is an artist. I see some good, good, good. A little bit more. Get it up there. Perfect. Okay. Thank you so much. I will stick around. I'm actually going to stop the recording, um, but I am happy to stick.